Hi, my name's Ben Taylor, and this is the Vesma Networks Products Channel, and today we're going to be discussing the Portico Mini CMTS. The Portico Doxus Mini CMTS is a high-capacity Doxus 3.0 CMTS. Optimized for Ethernet over coaxial applications, the Portico is a turnkey solution that can easily be deployed over existing cabling in MDU, hospitality, and commercial locations to deliver high-speed connections to up to 168 concurrent cable modems. The Portico contains a DHCP slash TFTP server and is also DOCSIS 2.0 compatible. On the front of the Portico we have the console port. The console port is used to serial into the unit. Beside this we have the power and alarms LEDs. On the back of the Portico we have the upstream RF port, which can handle up to four channels, and we have the downstream RF port, which can handle up to 16 channels. Over here, we have the SFP port, which is used for fiber connections, and beside that, we have the RJ45 port used for Ethernet connections. Both of these connections can be used to connect to IP, however, they cannot both be used at the same time. Beside this, we have the power supply module, which is used to turn the portico on and off. In order to connect to the portico via serial connection, you'll need to change a few settings on in PuTTY. First, click on Serial, then change the COM port to whatever COM port you found in Device Manager. On our device, it was COM port 6. Then you'll change the speed, or baud rate, to 115200, the data bits will remain at 8, the stop bits will remain at 1, the parity will be none, and the float control will be turned to none. Then click open and you'll have a connection to the unit. To SSH into the portico unit, you would click on SSH then enter in the IP address of the unit. And then click open and that will bring you to the command line interface. Once I've connected to the command line interface, I'll have to sign into the unit. The default username and password are admin and admin. Once I've signed in, I'll enter into normal mode. The CLI begins in normal mode. This mode contains the lowest level of permissions and is intended for basic tasks such as pinging an IP address or generating a debug dump. To display all the commands that are available in normal mode, I'll hit question mark. Normal mode contains eight commands and they are as follows. Debug triggers the unit to generate a debug dump which will capture critical troubleshooting information to be analyzed by VESMA. There are four types of debug dump, DHCP, wall, hop, and bridge. Enable allows the user to enter privileged mode. This feature is password protected. The default password is admin. Exit. Exit allows the user to exit the current mode. This will end the CLI session. Logout. Log out of the CLI session. This is available for Telnet connections only. No. The no command is used to disable network features. To use the command, simply type no before the network feature you wish to disable. For example, no root would disable the specified root. Page off. The page off command cuts off the page at the output of the show command. Ping. Ping allows the user to ping a specific IP address to, connect, to test the connection. Show. The show command is used to view information such as the firmware version. To use the command, simply type show before the feature you want more information about. For example, show version would show the current software version. The show command can be used with a number of other features. From here, we'll enter into privileged mode. Privileged mode allows the user to change the settings on the portico unit itself but not the portico configuration file. Privileged mode is password protected. By default, the password is admin. To enter into privileged mode, enter in 
enable, and enter, then type in the password. This can be changed, and you'll enter into privileged mode. To show all the commands in privileged mode, I'm going to enter in question mark. Now, privileged mode has 16 new commands. The first of these commands is alias. Alias allows the user to enter in an alias to represent a string. ARP allows the user to isolate the ARP messages. Capture allows the user to initiate a Wireshark capture to capture specific packages. Config allows the user to enter in configuration mode. No password is required. Firewall allows the user to enable or disable the CMTS firewall. Hostname allows the user to change the hostname of the unit. HTTP password allows the user to change the password for the web GUI. LS displays the file list. NTP allows the user to set the network time protocol server for the unit to synchronize with. Password allows the user to change the privileged mode password. RM allows the user to remove a file. Type RM before the, file, the name of the file you wish to remove. SNMP allows the user to set and gather information about devices associated with the SNMP community. System allows the user to enter in system level commands. The system command allows the user to change the system clock, reset the system, and reboot the system. Telnet password allows the user to change the telnet password. Timeout allows the user to set how many minutes pass before either the telnet or web connection times out. And finally, username allows the user to change the telnet username. Next is configuration mode. Configuration mode provides the highest level of permissions as well as functionality. Configuration mode contains all the functionality of privileged mode, but also permits the user to make changes to the portico configuration file. To enter configuration mode, enter in config, hit enter, and you'll be in configuration mode. To display all the commands of configuration mode, enter in question mark. There are 21 new commands associated with configuration mode that do not appear in the other modes. The first of these is application. Application applies the RF channel configuration to the upstream or downstream. Embedded DHCP scope allows the user to view and define the scope of the DHCP server for each interface. Cable allows the user to configure the portico and the cable modems. Copy allows the user to copy a specific file or the running configuration. CPE class allows the user to specify a customer's premises equipment class. DHCP allows the user to define the DHCP options. DHCP GIDAR primary allows the user to enable or disable the DHCP GIDAR primary. Gateway allows the user to load balance a gateway. Hop controls the duration of each hop. Interface allows the user to configure a specified interface. IP allows the user to configure the IP settings such as access and snooping. Load balance allows the user to engage in specific load balancing of the gateway. Logging host allows the user to log system messages to a remote host. Network mode allows the user to choose the network mode for the specified interface. The user may choose either Layer 2 Bridge or Layer 3 Routing. PAT allows the user to set the program allocation table period in milliseconds. PMT allows the user to set the program mapping table period in milliseconds. QNQ Q Q can be used to tunnel a particular VLAN of one network through another network. Route allows the user to set a new route. Spectrum allows the user to adjust the spectrum rules. Subnet isolation allows the user to isolate a specific subnet by blocking all traffic from that subnet. And finally, 
Update Firmware allows the user to update the firmware of the portico by specifying the IP address of the location the firmware can be uploaded from. How do I find the running status page? To find the running status page, click on System Manage, then click on Running Status. The running status page contains such basic info as the firmware version, the hardware version, the system time, the start time, and the running time. It also contains Gigi network status information such as the IP address, the net mask, the gateway, and the MAC address. It also contains Gigi link status information such as the speed, the transmission rate, the reception rate, as well as the number of sent packets, the number of sent bytes, the number of sent unicast packets, the number of sent broadcast packets, the number of sent multicast packets, as well as the number of received packets, the number of received bytes, the number of received unicast packets, the number of received broadcast packets, and the number of received multicast packets. How do I get to the power and temperature page? To get to the power and temperature page, I'll click on System Manage, then Power and Temperature. The power and temperature page shows the temperature of each of the modules, as well as the power settings for each one. Within those settings is the status of each of the channels within the module. So in this case, the status is on for each one of the channels. There's also the reference voltage, the real voltage, and the current. Where do I set the password? To set the password, click on System Manage and Set Password. On the Set Password page, you can change the password of the web user, the telnet user, the password for privilege mode, as well as restore the factory default password. Where do I find the IP interface page? To find the IP interface page, click on Network Interface, then IP Interface. The IP Interface page contains the Gigi section and the IP subnet section. The Gigi section allows you to determine how the Gigi port will obtain its IP address. It can obtain the IP address dynamically or statically. The IP subnet section shows you the available subnets on the unit. Currently on this unit, only the Gigi port has a subnet. However, other interfaces can be added as well. To add an interface, enter in the IP address, the subnet, then select the interface that you want that IP address and subnet to apply to, then click Add. To remove an IP address subnet, what you'll do is you'll select the IP address and then you'll click Delete. How do I add a static route? To add a static route, click on Network Interface, then Static Route. This will bring you to the static root page. On the static root page, enter in the destination IP address, the net mask, and the gateway, then click Add. To remove a static root, simply select the root in question, then click Delete. How do I add a policy root? To add a policy root, click on Network Interface, then Policy Root. This will bring you to the policy root page. To add a policy root, Put, enter in the source IP, the net mask, and the gateway, then click Add. To remove a policy route, simply select the policy route you'd like to remove, then click Delete. How do I find and change the DHCP scope? To find and change the DHC, DHCP scope, click on Network Interface, then Embedded DHCP Scope. On this page, we'll see the already configured DHCP scope for the cable modem and for the host. In this, we will have the start IP, end IP, net mask, gateway, primary DNS, secondary DNS, TFTP, boot file, log server, time of day server, and lease time. To set the scope, simply choose the interface that you want, such as the cable modem, host, or MTA. This also applies to CPE classes. And then you'll enter in the following information, such as the start IP, end IP, net mask, gateway, 
primary DNS, secondary DNS, TFTP, server IP, boot file, log server, time of day server, lease time, and then click add. Now to remove a DHCP scope, you'll choose the interface such as cable modem, and then click delete. Where do I find and set the network parameters? To find and set the network parameters, click on network interface, then network parameter. On the network parameter page, you can choose the network mode. So in this case, we can choose for the cable modem subnet to have it on layer 2 bridge or layer 3 routing. We could also have the CPE subnet be on layer 2 bridge or layer 3 routing. To change this, we would click apply. This also shows us the DHCP server for the cable modem and the host, allowing us to add and delete them as we see fit. This also allows us to enable DHCP IP snooping. It also allows us to enable DHCP relay. It also allows us to enable or disable DHCP GIDAR primary mode. It allows us to enable or disable option 82 and it allows us to disable or enable layer 2 VPN. Where do I add or remove a CPE class? To add or remove a CPE class, click on Network Interface, then CPE Class. CPE stands for Customer Premises Equipment and allows the user to create new interfaces to represent the equipment that they're using. To add a new interface, simply enter in the class name, the DHC option to be used, in this case option 60, and the option value, then click Add. To remove a class, simply select the class from above, and then click Delete. Where do I find the settings for the virtual local area networks? To find the settings for the virtual local area networks, click under Network Interface, and VLAN setting. On the VLAN setting page, you are able to create a VLAN based on the interface by putting in the interface you'd like, the VLAN ID, and then tagging it as outband, inband, inbound, or both. To remove a VLAN, simply click on the VLAN above and then click delete. We can also add VLANs based on IP by adding in the IP address, network, or netmask, VLAN ID and then tag it as outbound and click add. To remove one, simply click it above and then click delete. Where do I find and change the access control list? To find and change the access control list, click on network interfaces, then ACL settings. On the ACL settings page, you'll have the access control list control and the access control list config. Under Access Control List Control, we'll be able to disable or enable the Access Control List. Under Access List Control List Config, you'll be able to configure the Access Control List by adding or removing entries from the list. Where do I find and change the upstream channel information? To find and change the upstream channel information, click on RF Interface, then Upstream. The page will take a moment to load. Once the page is loaded, you will see information regarding the four upstream channels. There is the channel ID, the channel status, the frequency, type, bandwidth, profile, power, D3.0 mode, utilization, capacity, dynamic flow, and spectrum rule. To edit a single channel directly, simply click on the channel, and once you're done, click apply. To add it mo to edit multiple channels quickly, click on Fast Config and enter in the settings, then click OK. Where do I find and change the downstream channels? To find and change the downstream channels, click on RF Interface, then Downstream. The page will take a moment to load. Once the downstream channel page is loaded, it will show information about the 16 possible downstream channels starting with the channel ID, the status, frequency, annex, modulation, interleave, power, utilization, capacity, 
and dynamic flow. To edit any one channel, simply click on the channel, change the settings, then click Apply. To edit more than one channel quickly, click on Fast Configuration, enter in the settings, then click OK. Where do I find the Spectrum Analysis page? To find the Spectrum Analysis page, click on RF Interface, then Spectrum Analysis. The current Spectrum Analysis shows nothing in it because this is a demonstration portico and it's not plugged into an RF network. However, when there is more RF information, there will be a larger bell curve represented here. Where do I find the Spectrum Rule page? To find the Spectrum Rule page, click on RF Interface, then Spectrum Rule. On the Spectrum Rule page, we can add in the hop frequency, or we can add a new Spectrum Rule by clicking Add, then entering in the Rule ID, the correct percentage of correctables, the percentage of uncorrectables, the hop priority, so between frequency, modulation, channel width, or none, the frequency, the frequency band, the start channel width, the end channel width, as well as the signal to noise ratio, and then which channels that it applies to. Once all of that information has been filled out, click Submit, and the new spectrum rule will be added. Where do I set the load balance for the portico? To set the load balance for the portico, click on RF Interface, then Load Balance. On this page, you'll be able to set the global parameters as well as the load balance for a group. To set the global parameters, choose the method, which can be disabled, dynamic, or static, the period, overload, difference, and initial tech, which can be the broadcast ranging, period ranging, unicast ranging, or direct then click Apply. To set the load balance for a group, click Add, then enter in the group ID, then choose the channels in the upstream it will apply to, and choose the channels in the downstream it will apply to, then click Submit, and you'll have a new load balance rule for the group. Where do I set the load balance for the cable modems? To set the load balance for the cable modems, click on RF Interface, then CM Load Balance. On the CM Load Balance page, you'll have the CM Load Balance, the included cable modems, and the excluded cable modems. To add a cable modem, click on Include or Exclude, enter in the group ID, enter in the class, which can be MAC address, or MAC organizationally unique identifier, or MAC range. Then click either Add or Delete, depending on whether or not you're adding or deleting a cable modem from the group. Where do I find the cable modem flap list? To find the cable modem flap list, click on CM Manage, then CM Flap List. A modem flap is when the connection by the modem to the head end has been dropped or gone offline and then comes back online. On the CM flat page, we can change the flap aging. So the aging interval right now is 60 minutes. This can be changed. We can also search or change the flap list. In this case, we would filter based on the MAC address, but we can also filter based on IP address, upstream, or downstream. Where do I find the CM or CPE status? To find the CM or CPE status, Click on CM Manage, then CM CPE Status. On this page, you'll see all the cable modems and customer premises equipment and the information about it. On this particular unit, no customer premises equipment or cable modems are hooked up, which is why this page is blank. On a regular page, you'll see the number, CPE, SID, MAC, IP, status, authorization status, version, the downstream and upstream channels, the power in downstream and upstream, the signal to noise ratio downstream and upstream, the rate downstream and upstream, the model and configuration file. This page also lets you restart all cable modems or export the settings that a cable modem has been set up on or restart an individual cable modem or simply delete a cable modem from the list. 
where do I find the cable modem permit settings? To find the cable modem permit settings, click on CM Manage, then CM Permit Setting. On the CM Permit Setting page, you'll be able to choose to either permit or prohibit cable modems from joining the network. This page also contains a list of the cable modem MAC addresses which are prohibited. Where do I add a cable modem configuration file? To add a cable modem configuration file, click on CM Manage, then CM Config File. In this case, you'll choose the cable modem based on its MAC address, then choose the configuration file, and click Add. It is important to note that the Portico does not actually create cable modem configuration files, but you can upload cable modem configuration files to the Portico to be distributed to the cable modems that are associated with the Portico's network. Where do I set the rate of a cable modem? To set the rate of a cable modem, click on CM Manage, then CM Rate Setting. Here, you'll click you'll choose the MAC address of the cable modem in question, and you can add in the upstream rate and the downstream rate. Where do I find the ARP table? To find the ARP table, click on Device Status ARP Table. The Address Resolution Protocol table demonstrates which MAC addresses are associated with which IP addresses. Where do I find the multicast statistics? To find the multicast statistics, click on Device Status, then Multicast Statistics. This will show you the various different statistics associated with the multicasts. Now in this case, because there is multi no multicast associated with the unit, there's very few statistics to be shown here. Where do I find the up signal quality? To find the up signal quality, Click on Device Status, then Up Signal Quality. This page may take a moment to load. Once the page is loaded, it shows the quality of all the upstream signals from all four channels by showing the channel, unerred code words, corrected code words, uncorrectable code, word, code words, and upstream signal to noise ratio. Where do I manage the general settings? To manage the general settings, click on Device Manage, then General Manage. On the General Manage page, you'll be able to set the time, set the Network Time Protocol server, set the Syslog server, as well as set the SNMP management settings. Where do I find the system logs? To find the system logs, click on Device Status, then System Log. This will show a history of all the logs that have been recorded on the unit and can be searched using a keyword. Where do I manage the configuration of the unit? To manage the configuration of the unit, click on Device Manage, then Config Manage. On the Config Manage page, we have the ability to back up system settings, restore system settings, restore factory settings, copy the start config, and reboot the CMTS. Where do I find the firmware upgrade page? To find the firmware upgrade page, click on Device Manage, then Firmware Upgrade. On the firmware upgrade page, you can upgrade the firmware by simply choosing the file directly, and then clicking Upgrade. You can also upload files onto the CMTS, such as cable modem configuration files, to be used on other devices. To do this, simply choose the file, then click Upload. This also contains a list of all the files that have already been uploaded onto the portal.